Hello everyone and welcome back to the CX show and this is my preview show of the 2023 Cyclocross World Championships which come to you this year from the Netherlands and Hugerheide for the first time since 2014. Let's take a quick look at the route and it's pretty much the similar course to what we've had in previous years at the World Cups. You've got some sections in the woods that have been reversed, for example, where Lars van der Haar crashed last year. And you've also got the triple flyover, which I guess makes the race more fan friendly, but whether it actually adds any value, I don't know. For me though, <coughs> the key section is going to be the barriers on an uphill grassy section into the steep drop to the stairs, off camber and then to the line. So the last minute to minute and a half of racing. If you can jump those barriers quickly, you'll probably go on to win the race. And for me, that is particularly important for the men's race. Let's take a look now at each of the races and who I think will battle it out for the win. Uh, starting off with the junior women's, and I think the big favourite there is Lauren Molengroff. She is probably on par with Zoe Batchstead in terms of cyclocross and her just dominant ability. She is going to be a very, very strong rider when she moves into the U23s or even elite in the future. The sisters Ava and Isabella Holgram from Canada, they will be big factors. They've come really strong in recent weeks and have been able to challenge Molengroff. And for me, the final favourite is Flora Mears from Belgium. On to the junior men, and I think it's between four riders. You've got Fen Sepp van den Boer, Jordi Corsus, Andrew August, the American, and Floris Haverdings, uh, David Haverdings is, is a little brother. Um, those for me are the four that will really battle it out for the win. Under 23 women's, and they have a huge favourite. They've got one of the big three in the elite that are still racing U23. Bit of a shame for me, but. I get her decision and reasoning behind it. Shirin Van Anroy is a huge favourite to take the win at the Under-23 Worlds. Behind her, you've got Zoe Batchdead, Leonie Bentveld and Lena Berkier, I think, will be in and around the battle for the podium. On a very good day, they may be able to challenge Shirin for half the race. Under 23 men now, and similar to the women's under 23, I think Tivo Nace is a top big favourite to take the win. Behind him, you've got your defending champion, Jurian Vishora, Vitsa Mjersen, and Jensi Mikkels from the Belgian team. His challenger for me is going to be Tivo Del Grosso, the Dutchman. And then you've got David Haverdings. Dario Leo, Lilo for Switzerland and a fun British tinge in this one, a bit of bias maybe, but Joseph Blackmore I think could podium on this sort of course. The elite women sees two of the big three go head to head for the first time at elite world championships. Fen van Empel and Puck Peterson are overwhelming favourites to take the win. For me on the course, Fen van Empel has the edge, although the barriers where they're situated could tip it slightly in Peters' favour if it's close racing. But for me, I don't see it. Van Empel is a big favourite. Behind them, I can only think of the Dutch. Lucinda Brand, Anna Marie Verst is coming on well. Alvarado, Betsema, Van Alphen, Van der Heiden. I don't see anyone challenging the Dutch. 
the season would suggest that going into the men's elite race that Wout Van Aert is the favourite to take the win. He's been the dominant rider compared to Mathieu van der Poel. However, I think there's two factors that come into play that won't one won't be appreciated, one will be. The first is that that barrier section, the key section I talked about earlier, really favours Mathieu van der Poel. He has always been more comfortable bunny hopping than Wout van Aert. We've seen Wout van Aert have a few issues this year, bunny hopping, and van der Poel's just quicker. But the other one is that at elite level, Van der Aert has never beaten Van der Poel at Hugerheide. He's come close a couple of times, finished 8 to 10 seconds down, but he's also lost by a minute. So, small factor, but could come into play later on in the race, especially given that it's a course designed by Van der Poel's dad. Elsewhere, I think the Dutch have Lars van der Haar that could compete. He's won on Hugerheide before. Uh, the year Van der Poel struggled. Uh, Lauren Swake, Elias Bitt, Michael Van Tornout will be up there for the Belgians. And two dark horses that require good starts would be Cameron Mason and Kevin Kuhn. Kuhn has come on particularly well, especially at the start. So he will potentially be able to be in that fight for a medal. Mason will need to get a better start than he has been so he doesn't have to chase through the field, but did finish fourth in Loonhout. On to the hardest part of the video now, and that is to make some predictions. And then Molengraf and August, the American, will take the junior titles. Uh, the women's will go to Van Anroy and Thibaut Nace. <coughs> At elite level, I expect one win for Alphaston and one win for Jumbo Visma. I think Van Empel is such a big favourite to the elite women that she's going to win. I think she'll take the barriers out of the equation. And <coughs> finally, for the men's elite, you could toss a coin between Van der Poel and Van Aert. They've shown in Benidorm, Hummer and Besançon that they are both incredibly strong. I think the barriers will come into play the most, despite the flipping of the coin. Uh, I think Mathieu van der Poel will bunny hop away, maybe on that last lap, maybe earlier, to get the gap on Van Aert and take the win in the men's 